Today we're gonna cook with soul. And with red snapper poached and with sauteed soul. These are wonderfully fresh fish and three of our favorite recipes. We're going to start with sole and meniere, that famous dish where the sole is sautéed in butter. It's just lovely. Yes. And this is the real sole. Yeah, this is what they call the Dover sole. Dover sole, In yeah. France, we call that sole anglaise, you know, English oh. sole. It's a lovely fish, and you can skin it, as Jack will show you. Then let's describe this. What do we have here? Yes, we have, look at that white, beautiful white flesh here. Those are the gray sole. Gray sole, the lemon sole is even larger. And as you can see here, enormous row. I mean, those row here, Usually people throw it out. My wife adores this. I mean, when oh, we have delicious. that at home, I saute the roe. She loves it. And then we have and more here. I think here. the gray sole is number two after the channel sole, don't right, you? Right, right. What do we have here now? Well, we have a type of flounder, which actually is a yellow tail. You know, you can see and it. And there is a little yellow. yellow. Yes. And this here, you know, I used to fish for those. Those are the fluke. And uh, you can see here, uh, the meat, you just have a little bit of meat in the center, almost no meat on top of that. Tell you, frankly, there is over a hundred different types of flat fish in the sole family. Dab, flounder, petrolis, mm -hmm. or dover, and so forth. But today, we want to take this one. So we have the white and the dark side, right? Personally, I leave the white skin. I remove both. Oh. See, when you crush it here, when you cut it here, and you start scraping, you want to take the skin out of it? Yeah. You go ahead. I'll hold it for you here. But you can't do this with any other fish. That, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, this comes out very easily, yes? Which doesn't on another sole. I mean, don't. if you try that with uh, a great sole and all that, you're going to have problems. Do here, there is the roe. Cut the head this way. For me here, the meat starts right here, you know? Mm. So I cut with my scissor right here, but you like that part, I right? I like everything, because it's so expensive. There may be a little delicious fish there. Do you leave the roe, or do you remove the roe, too? Oh, I'll take the roe out. All right, so we can rub it this way, which That's push... very nice, isn't it? Push the, the roe out. And then, of course, what we have but to on do the other here... Side... I leave the white skin on, I just scale it. See, mm -hmm. it scales pretty well. Oh, I would take it off. But you want you want it off? Yeah. OK, so we take it off on that one. That's wonderful, isn't it? Right. I have two more here. Mm -hmm. And as you can see the difference, I have the white skin left on, which I scaled, mm -hmm. of course, and it's narrower because I have cut that strip here mm -hmm. and yeah. that strip here, which is also bone. So this is basically bone out. Mm -hmm. What would we say for fish stock? All fish of this. stock, yeah, basically all of that. You know, and the, the skin head. too. The skin too. The flat fish does very good stock. So it makes know. a wonderful stock. Yeah. As you could make the stuff, and all you need to do is just put it in a pot and simmer it with lightly salted water. OK, so we're going to saute that in a large skillet. And I think we're going to use that nonstick skillet. It's a bit easier, right? I'm going to put a little bit of oil in there, a piece of butter. That should be hot enough, yes. Now, this is going to be meunier, so you're going to dredge it lightly in flour. A meunier, so you want to put it in flour, put a bit mm -hmm. of salt on top. Let's do, are we doing two? Yeah. We're doing you. And mine right there. 
Meunier right. means the miller's wife. The miller is called the... The Meunier, yes. The Meunier. So this is Meunier. And his wife is the La mm -hmm. Meunier. Exactly. OK, so we put it this one here. And this one the other way. And it is going to take about three minutes on each side. Now, let's see now. Nicely brown on one side. Brown it on the other side. And those are the firmest of the sole. About the only sole you could put on a grill and turn with a fork, like I said. Now, how do we tell when it's done? Well, when you open it in the center here and you see that it separates from the bone, you know that basically it is ready. That's very important to know because you right. don't want to overcook it. And some people say, cook it until the fish flakes. You've overcooked it in that sense, right. haven't you? Sometimes you may cover it also, you know, to give it a little bit of steam. Mm -hmm. Will it change taste a little bit? I like it done a bit longer this way. Yes. So we'll leave it for another minute. I think they are ready. You can serve it, of course, with the bone on, as Julia likes it this way. Otherwise, you can bone it out. And what you do, this one is the one with the skin on, as you can see. And you can either separate it this way or run your knife right there. This is that wonderful flat bone. Yes, yeah, in the center of it. And I've cut it in the center. So what happens is that usually the maitre d' does that in front of you. So you can remove one of those fillets, as you can see here. Beautiful white meat, you know. And the other fillet like this. And it's definitely done because it comes easily off the bone, and now but it's the, still the, juicy. The second one, yeah. you know, we lift up you very nicely. Add, add that to your fish stock. Add that to your fish stock. Here you are. And then we put this back on top of it. There, so I could either do that in the dining room in front of the customer, or you can do that on your table, rearrange that on your plate, and at that point you have your four individual fillets of sole all bone out. It's a nice way of doing it. And now you're going to make the black butter sauce. Yeah, we do black butter. So, Julia, you want to put some capers on top of that? OK, are you going to put them in the pan? We should. We them, you can put them in the pan. Well, I'd rather put them in the pan. OK, right? I'll do a little bit of parsley. We have some lemon juice, too. Mm-hmm. For the parsley. There, you can see the butter is changing color there. And you want it a beurre, what we call a beurre noisette. That is hazelnut color. You want to give me some, some capers? You're going to put some capers in there, right in there. Yeah. Oh, so I think they're nice. Thank you. OK. And you want to put some of the lemon juice directly mm -hmm. in there also. Oh, that's Good. And put your parsley first. Mm -hmm. So when you put that on top of it, mm, it can cook, so cook it a little bit. It cook your parsley by putting the hot butter and lemon mixture. And now... Well, there you are. That's it. And now you just eat it. take this beautiful red snapper. Fresh out of the water. Fresh out of the water. <laughs> and we're going to turn it into a fish fillet poached in white wine. That's one of the classic ways of doing fish fillets in French cooking. Yes. And you're going to do it one way, and I'll do it another way. Exactly. So I'll take the fillet. In fact, you know, that type of fish, those uh, grouper or type of fish like that are very good for stock. You know, so you do fish a great stock. stock with that, yes. Here is one filet. Try to go under the gill here to lose the least amount of fish that you can. And this is a beautifully fresh fish also, except you've got your finger in it. Yes. You can see it has a nice bright eye. Yeah, nice bright eye, that's true, yes. And uh, very often also, we used to cook those fish on the bone, you know, but now conventionally, it is done on the filet. This one has been scaled already. I'm taking the the bone from the belly here. And that, again, would go into the stock. I'm cleaning it up a little bit. A bit of the tail. I think it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That would be a nice filet, a big one. But I'd, I'd like the skin taken off, please. Oh, you want the skin? Yes, off? I Oh, do. OK. Mm -hmm. I will oblige this way, lifting it up, you know, to hold 
This mm -hmm. way, and you move in a kind of jigsaw. You can hold that in a towel, too. Yes, and you it's move kind of slippery, you know. in a jigsaw fashion, you mm -hmm. know, to try really to get your skin out of it. So it's a very useful that looks lovely. technique. Huh? I have to have some shallots yeah. with mine. If you don't have shallots, you can always use scallions. Uh -huh. Shallots have a little more flavor, I think. I'm going to put the shallots. I'm going to have a little bit of butter and in And you there. want to poach that with the... Uh... You use white wine. I've not had great success always with white wine. I find it a little sour so you, frequently, you... so I always use dry white French vermouth. Okay. There is a horrible American vermouth. Do not use. I, oh, shall, yes? I shall not reveal its name. Okay. But it's awful. I'm going to keep the nice side up here. Okay. That's Let's beautiful. See, and there's my vermouth. You have salt, pepper, the vermouth is there. A little bit of water in. You want your mushroom? And then mushrooms. What is this? I can't remember. Is this called Gourmet or Bonne Femme? Bonne Femme, yes, that's right. That is good wife. I see, you remember it more than I do. <laughs> good no. wife who cooks her husband. You know what I'll do Beautiful for you? Dish. Maybe I'll do a piece of paper. Oh, to yes, we need that also. So what you can do is to butter the paper this way up and fold it in half. And this is fold. always the first thing you learn in cooking yes. school is how to make a paper cover. Right. And from the cover it's where there is no opening, you do one triangle into another smaller and smaller triangle. And then you measure the radius here, which is from here about to here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have your nice buttered. buttered pieces of uh, paper here. Right? You know that there's a, a French book called The Repertoire de la Cuisine, or The Kitchen Repertory. And I think you did it. You did the translation of that. No, I did a and little how many, yes. how many fish and white wine were there? So oh over, over 200. Yes, over 200. There's 7,500 recipes in a very tiny book, but very elliptical. Just give you very simple explanation. OK. Well, Shall I start mine, too? Mm -hmm. So what I will do this here... This should be about six minutes or so. OK. For me, I'm going to put a little bit of onion, which I'm chopping just like you did yours. And uh, my two pieces of fish, which I'm putting directly on top with... Uh, I use black paper because I like the black paper. Some salt, white wine. Yeah, dry white wine. This is the Chardonnay. I think I'll put a bit of tomato in it. And maybe, you know, I'll take the skin out of it. And if you have a good vegetable peeler like this, you know, you can take the skin of your tomato. No, does Chris Felix du Glaé? I think that has yes. tomatoes and mushrooms. You are absolutely it. right there. So See? I guess this would be a la Provençal, would it? Yes. But you need a little garlic in. You remember your classic more than I do, you know? So here we are. You mean you want me to put garlic on top of this? No. OK. But you can. OK. It's your recipe. I'll cut this. So now, basically, again, you know, this is great for mm -hmm. stock. You have the skin, you have the That's... juice, the seed. All I have is the flesh of the tomato, which I'll cut in little dice. OK. I'll have that part here. And maybe a bit of fresh thyme, I think, I want to put in there. So maybe the pull the sprig of thyme, you know. This way it will be nice on top. It will give a lot of flavor. Yes, that will be yeah. kind of a la Provençal. Yes, with the thyme, with thyme, tomato. Yes. It's the style of the south of France, it's true. Except for not having the garlic. No garlic. <laughs> and this is going to cook for a couple of minutes, and during that time of the garnish, we're going to do cucumber, and in a classic way also, to do the cucumber, we're going to tourner cucumber, so you all cut them in the same size, and you could also peel it, but conventionally, we cut them this way. Well, in, I think if you're, if you're going to cook it with the skin on, you want to make sure that the cucumber hasn't been waxed. Yes. And this is an un unwaxed one. Do you want to do some? Sure. Here, here is a little knife where you have one. 
So what we want to do here, you start with where the, the seed are. You remove that part of the seed, of course. Or you can Taking cut the, the whole thing in half and use a spoon to get it out. You right? can do that too. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you want to do what we call tourner here, that is doing kind of little football shape, then you want to use a paring knife like that. This is what you learn in school. And take the smallest amount, of course, of the skin to give it that shape. And actually, you know, one cucumber is enough for like three or four people. You serve four or yes, five pieces per person. Mine isn't doing very well, so I'll eat it. Good. Well, eat that one. It's not too good, okay. too. Okay. That cucumber has a lot of seed. Mm. There's almost no flesh left, you know? I think cooked, cooked cucumbers, just lovely with fish. With fish, it's excellent. Mm. So what we'll do here is actually just put a little bit of water, a dash of salt, and as soon as it comes to a boil, I'm going to boil that one and a half, two minutes. It goes very fast. I think mine is about done. Yes, I, I would say that this is great. You're absolutely right there. We should start the sauce. And your sauce you're going to do? I'm going to do the classic beurre blanc. See, where this, this one, one comes first, from? Now, this is when I was in Paris, gosh, way back in the very early 50s. White butter sauce you didn't find in classical cooking. There was a beurre from Nantes. Oh, the beurre Nantes. Uh, yeah, right, I remember that. And there was only one person in Paris called La Mère Michel. Who was doing and it? She was doing it in her restaurant. She was an elderly woman with white hair, and she made her sauce in a pan exactly like this. So after she taught us how to do it, I went out and bought this pan. So that. How oh, old? That's about 50 years old. <laughs> I'm going to put my cucumber here with a little bit of water. That's it. Just cook a few minutes. And uh, well, I'm going to strain my sauce out. We'll uh, strain it right just hold there. it like that with the lid, you know? And that gives you all the juice of the fish. And the advantage of that technique, of course, is that you keep that nice and warm we'll here in it its corner. And then you can do your sauce right. in there. We want to boil this down to practically a tablespoon. So you're going to do a beurre blanc. Beurre blanc de Nantes. And basically here, this is an emulsion of this. You reduce and you use that as a flavoring agent, yes. right? And also yeah. the butter will nice thicken in it. Beautiful, oh. yes. Good. Now so you're going to do what? I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do, let's see, mine. Mine. It's about cooked too, so I may remove it and put it in uh, something like this and do the sauce here. I think my cucumber are ready here. There is basically no water left, mm. but I will drain just the remaining water. Just about That's about none. It. Yeah, I can no. steal a little piece of butter from you. No, for me. Okay. As much I'll as put you... this in there, uh, a dash of salt, and that's it. I will finish letting that melt here, warm up, to serve with the fish. OK. Now, are you ready with the... Uh, oh, your reduction is beautiful there. Yeah. OK. And here, what do you have here, about two, two tablespoons? About three tablespoons. Yeah, two, three tablespoons. Now, you do three. it right over heat, don't you? Yes. Oh. Lower heat, sir. And Lower then the La Mer Michel, she used to do it, putting it bit by bit in. Yes. I'll do it your method, because it's faster. Good. I think of the Burbo came into fashion again with what was it, Michel Gerard and La Nouvelle Cuisine. Yes, that's true. And then now that everyone is so afraid of fat, because they don't know how to manage it properly, <laughs> you don't see it much anymore. But it is delicious, I think. Absolutely. And you know, if you consider very often, you know, you do a beurre blanc or something like this, and you end up putting four or five tablespoons of butter to serve that to two, three people. Well, a couple of tablespoons of butter per person, it's not the end of the world. Well, I think you have to be aware of it's not something you're going to eat every day. Right. And then if it was anything that's left over, you can keep and beat into a, say, a velouté sauce. In a velouté, yeah. Yeah, you have a nice thick mm, it's delicious. It's really good. That hasn't thickened a great deal. I think it's great. Yeah, you want to taste it? If I think. It's 
good, isn't it? That is good. Do I want any? A little dash of vermouth? All right. Mm. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> now, what we need is a little bit of pepper in it. Yeah. You want some black? No, I love white. Little white. She I like black pepper. So what I'm going to do with mine is actually... Mm. You can't eat all the sauce. We need it for the fish. Oh. I'm going to move mine to... Well, that looks very nice. ...to a gratin dish like this. And with and, the skin, uh, which is decorative. At that point, I'm going to do a little bit of so-called a beurre blanc. So I put, oh, about that much, a couple of teaspoons of, of butter, and about the same amount of flour. What do I have flour right here? So I can go with the tip of my... So there's going to be kind with, of a... And have it. A beurre manier. A beurre manier, that's right. And I mix it together. And it's great to use a whisk for that, because you see what happened is that I really have a minimum, because I don't really want lunch here. And while at the end of my whisk, I can go directly into the hot liquid. This is cold, this is hot, and I will whisk it in, and it will incorporate very nicely and very easily. And right away, as you see, this will come to a boil and give me a little bit of the viscosity that I need. Just oily. And I can lend you a little bit of my beurre blanc if you need it. No, I'm putting cream in mine. We are putting in cream. So I'm putting uh, two, two, three tablespoons of cream. Mm, well, that's going to be nice. And of course, I will let that reduce for a second. Maybe a dash of lemon juice. Do you think so? Layer to have a bit of acidity. Good. To a few drops at the end. That's about it. I mean, I'm basically ready. And yours? Well, I think I'm going to serve my rice in here. Directly in there. That didn't thicken up. It should have should look like a hollandaise. I think a little parsley. Would you like a few of those cubes that were around? Like this? Some up in there. And a few here. That, those look awfully nice, don't they? Yes. This is very, very classic. Mm -hmm. Let's see mine. Maybe arrange some. Uh, mm. I think cucumbers are really just lovely with fish, I think. Yes. Just putting a little ring of uh, cucumber. And I will serve my fish there with the sauce, a bit of the tomato in there. Mm. Very pretty. Let me borrow a little bit of your parsley here on mm. the top. Et voilà, madame. Et voilà. I think those are great dish, you know. It's fun yeah. cooking together, it isn't is it? It is fun cooking together. So, bon appétit. And happy cooking. <laughs>